Knowing these common mistakes in logo design has saved me getting egg on my face over the years with client projects. So stick around to the end of this video to see if they can save you too. What's up designers, welcome back to Digifrog Designs. If you're new here, I'm Matt Roberts, brand identity designer and illustrator. When embarking on your logo design journey, whether it be for yourself or a client, there are some common mistakes we've all made, myself included. So today we're gonna look at six logo design mistakes you don't want to make. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We post new videos every Wednesday, helping you become a better designer. Let us know your cardinal sins of logo design in the comments below. Mistake number one, using too many fonts. Many logo designers often include too many fonts in hopes of making the logo look attractive, but by doing so, they end up designing one that looks amateurish. Try to stick to one or two fonts as a rule of thumb, three at an absolute maximum. Logo designs are supposed to be simple. Even badge and vintage style logos are simple in layout and construction and normally don't go above two or three fonts. Choosing the right font can make a logo design look memorable, just as a bad choice can make it look unprofessional. Special attention needs to be taken when it comes to picking the font. Each font has a personality. Being a designer, you need to pick a font that reflects the message of the brand. And remember to check the licenses for any fonts that you want to use in a logo design. Mistake number two, making it too complex. You get your logo design and it looks great. You've got everything you wanted on there, but if you need to make it small, how is that complex logo going to look? I was chatting to a business owner the other day that has a complex logo, and they were saying they come to realize the problems that come from having a complex logo. When they reduce it down, you can't make out what it is or what the text on the logo says. It's important to think of the suitability of a logo and where it will be used. Favicon on a website, those little boxes on your browser tabs, they're a 16 pixel square. Imagine what your logo would look like in one of those. Or on the complete opposite end of the scale, what it would look like on a billboard or something even bigger. Ideally, your logo should be simple. Look at the big brands like Apple, Pepsi, FedEx. They all have super simple logos. Try to simplify down your identity to the simplest form and then you can get across your larger message in your marketing. It doesn't have to say everything you do in your logo and most importantly, get something that's recognizable and works well where you need it to and then build the brand around that. Mistake number three, stretching and distorting fonts. When I say distorting or stretching, I'm not talking about using effects, type on a path, resizing or anything like that. I'm talking about when you stretch or squish a font within an inch of its life, whether it be horizontally or vertically, just don't do it. Try to kern and track the font to get it more towards where you were looking for. Maybe resize it. It's surprising how many times you see this in logos. If it's not working in the design, it might be worth trying something different. Mistake number four, not designing as a vector. This is another mistake that happens far too often and that's designing logos as raster images rather than vector. When I say raster image, I mean JPEG, PNG, amongst others. You might be saying to me right now, but my logo is a raster image and I don't have any problems with it. But try to resize it and see what happens. The problem with raster images is they can only scale to a certain point before they start to pixelate and distort, which drastically affects the quality of the logo. By designing your logo as a vector, you're making the logo more versatile, having the ability to scale it to whatever size you need. So when you're looking for a logo designer for your next project, make sure you're getting a vector logo in your logo package so you're not having to recreate the logo constantly at every size you need. Normally this would be an EPS file created in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, something like that. By getting this format, it will remain crystal clear at whatever size you need. You can scale it to the size of the moon without a loss in resolution. Mistake number five, following the latest design trends. I've covered this one briefly in my five tips for creating successful logo designs video, which I'll drop a link to in the description box below. But we're gonna take a deeper look today. You'll probably see every year, there seems to be a new trend that pops up and everybody seems to jump on that bandwagon. But the problem with this is, there'll be a new trend next year. So if you don't want to look out of date or out of fashion, you need to design a logo that's suited for the intended audience. You'll hear a lot of logo designers constantly referring to logos being timeless. And by timeless, they mean it works regardless of the trends at the moment. A design that's timeless appeals to the audience it's intended for, for hopefully the lifetime of the brand. You know the Nike logo? It hasn't changed for years, which has kept it timeless and relevant and suited for every generation. This mistake leads nicely onto mistake number six, designing for personal preference. I've lost count of the amount of times I've seen logos designed because it's what the business owner wanted. Yes, being the business owner, you need to like your logo, but the logo isn't for you, it's for your customers. You need to study your customers, you need to look at where they hang out, you need to look at what the likes and dislikes are, where they shop. 
you need to build a complete picture of them so you can design a logo that appeals to them. Yes, you want to target everybody, but by focusing on your target market, you'll target those people, but you'll also be getting people outside this audience too. By having a clear brand and message to a certain demographic, it'll help you attract and build a loyal customer base. By appealing to everyone, you appeal to no one. So if you're a designer or hiring a logo designer, make sure the logo is designed for the audience it's intended for. So there we have it. Those are my six logo design mistakes you don't want to make. Thanks for watching designers. So if you like this video, smash that subscribe button, give it a like, and also don't forget to ring that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. Share it with your friends on social. It really helps me reach more people, educating them on building better brands and what actually goes into designing them. Let us know your cardinal sins of logo design in the comments below and shop the merch to support the channel and show you're part of the DFD crew.